Hello, Laura. Hi. <laughs> well, that wasn't. I, was only, I thought I was holding it all together pretty well, actually. You know what we were, we were just testing to see who had the most patience. Yeah, I, I think that you were just trying to like. Um, can you see the sweat? Oh yeah, there's a lot <laughs> going on there. <laughs> so look, thanks ever so much for joining us. We are. Funnily enough, we're only the 35 minutes late, but hey, it doesn't matter. You're here now, so it doesn't matter. So look, we've got a lot of people on board. A lot of people have been asking questions and that kind of stuff and having a chat. And we're just going to wait for some, you know, there's a lot more interactions. But yeah, as I said, like, you know, this is really great that you've come on board. We were just talking about a few books while we were killing time with you, which was Alex Soth, Sleeping by the Mississippi. And um, the two, three other books that were really important here was Tish Mercer, which is on at the... Oh, I haven't seen that. Which is going to be on in about uh, seven days at the Photographer's Gallery, Youth and Employment by Tish Mercer. And uh, we've got Christina Broom, who is awesome and uh, a famous for photographing the subjects. And obviously, Vivian Meyer. So it was just to feature a few sort of fe more female photographers. It was, uh, you know, because uh, we were talking this week a lot on Twitter about uh, making sure that there's lots of coverage between the genders and the and race and all the things. Are and, you and a the token, token girl? No, that's no, actually, no. That, uh, the point was on a, on a, this Twitter discussion. Somebody made a, a comment that. Um, uh, there was a lot it was like a bit of a hornet's nest and what we you know what people don't understand is what goes into throwing the fishing net out and to get schedules of photographers who are available let alone what they are you know it's very difficult you've been running around all day and I know what that's like because you're going from place to place to place and you're running around and then you've, you've got a job to do and then and that kind of thing. I don't think people quite understand a photographer's life so much. So um, we throw the fishing net out and we look at schedule and who, who's available and that kind of thing. And then people come on board. So we're working really hard to make sure that we've got a really broad cross section. But as I said on Twitter, it's very difficult. It's easier said than done a lot of the time. And What's you know, the best we, question so far? The best question so far. Um, let's see that. I'm just going to have a quick scroll through. Have a look. I mean, let's, get, let's get cracking. Yeah. In fact, let's get cracking on your work because that's what I would like to talk about more than anything. And then I'm going to drag some questions in. Do us a favor. Can you just move to your right slightly? I've minimized my screen uh, so that I'm not the main focus and you are. And then I can bring in some of the work. So what I would like to talk about first um, in particular was uh, the work that you'd done more recently. Um, if you can see your screen, uh, I'm just going to pull that onto the screen. So this was your... I've, um, I've got another technical problem. I've... Um, yeah. Oh, no, I've sorted it. It's all good. Okay, all good. so this is youth, your um, YWA, youth, youth project. Yeah. yeah, and youth without age and life without death. And I'd like to talk about that, really, because... Um, that was the most recent piece of work that I'd seen. And I was really surprised by it at the time because I'm used to you photographing, um, I'm used to you photographing teenagers. That's how I know you and, and, and younger people. And it really, you know, it's all fantastic. And this seemed to be quite a, a departure in a way to that. You were suddenly off in Romania. So could may, maybe you describe the story of how you come to put this project together, why you arrived it there in the first place? I think um, the photographers that I respect the most are those that um, kind of aren't scared to fail. And I think that's one thing that um, I definitely felt like with this project. I kind of thought, well, OK, I can continue shooting teenagers and um, I can continue following my interests in that or I can try something completely different. Uh, and my projects up until recently had, had very much been about kind of noun and location. They'd very much been about a subject matter or a group. Um, and it was just kind of my exploration of that. Whereas um, I want to do something a little bit more freeing and a little bit more, I don't know, just kind of a little bit more risky, I guess. Um, mm. And it was just a reflection on how I was feeling. I was coming up to 
think, well, it was probably on my 30th birthday that I really felt this, um, I guess everyone feels it, like a fear that you're wasting your life and you're wasting a lot of time and you get to five o'clock and you're like, well, how have I done with my day? Um, and I, I just decided to kind of go with my gut and go on an adventure. And through kind of that escapism, what I found is that I was just constantly searching for time. And uh, whilst I was driving with my fixer in Romania, um, I wanted to go to Romania just because the flights were cheap and I'd always wanted to go there and it just felt like an easy escape. It was just so different from, from London. Um, and my fixer said to me, um, he said, God, you know, you're always talking about time. You're so obsessed with time. And, and he said, have you ever heard of the Romanian folktale, Youth Without Age and Life Without Death? And my ears kind of pricked up and I was like, wow, that's a beautiful title. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it just turns out that the story was about this main character that was searching for a world where time stops. Um, and that just kind of resonated with everything I was feeling. And when I was there, I just began to kind of really push myself, not only to kind of, um, I guess, shoot things that I wouldn't normally shoot, but also I guess I was looking to make new portraiture. I was very aware that... Um, I guess when I first started shooting, um, my natural instincts and way of shooting, I didn't really quit. I, like, I didn't really, I guess I didn't really think too much about it. It was very intuitive. It was very much like, well, I need to photograph the person in this way because that's what I'm feeling. That's just my instinct. And I began to notice the more I looked at other people's work that I just found it difficult to see something different and I wanted to do something different. Um, and I felt like the only way to do something different would be to create a picture. So adding in layers of elements and symbolism, um, using you know the things around me to create an image that has more than just um, what I can see in front of me. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that for me that uh, it there's a real edge to it all when you're photographing it, and um, there's no real it, you know there's no how can I put it? There's no real gloss to it. There's no um, uh, the, the the composition is is all slightly um, it, it very loose. It's not obvious, and that, I mean that's what I get from it. I really the, I like that approach. I like that standing right back from uh, from the subject and, and well, I really think that's kind of environment. Um, I I used to get scared that I was just chucking people in the middle of the frame, and what mm -hmm. I realised that I was actually doing is I was painting around the person. Mm -hmm. um, and that made me feel a lot more comfortable when I did place somebody in the middle of the frame because I was like, well, actually, I'm not placing them in the middle. I'm placing the world around them, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. But I think you have to be really aware of that because it's incredibly repetitive and boring if you can <laughs> do that. Um, and another way around that, I guess, is, is, you know, working on, you know, expanding what I'm shooting. So shooting landscapes, shooting more than one person in the frame, that kind of thing. By the way, we have another technical issue. I'm on a 23% battery, just to let you know. So, um, oh, fantastic! That's uh, <laughs> you're really testing me. I am. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, just showing a few more in the in this album, just so that people can get a real. Was it a disappointment uh, it? that my project wasn't full of teenagers? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but, uh, but I'm going to work our way backwards through actually, and that, what, what I I really like the fact that this is completely different from that. I know there's a lot of people out there photographing teenagers as their projects and that kind of thing. You seem to be doing that quite a long time ago now, so yeah. you know you were doing that. I, mean, when... I still do it. I love it. I still yeah. like. I mean, I started shooting about twelve years ago, and that was instantly. You know, when I was at uni in my first year, that was the first thing I was shooting. Um, and I'd never really done photography before. So it's strange that that subject matter just absolutely, I don't know, just seduced me instantly. Also, there's a, a slight nostalgia to it because now you'll start to look back and, you know, maybe not yet, but you might approach some of these projects again and, and uh, interact with those people again. So there's a, an ongoing uh, checking back in with your subjects I've seen that yeah. a little bit with, um, in fact, I went to Paul Trevor. This was years ago now, Paul Trevor's exhibition in Liverpool. And he'd done this in, in Liverpool, but he'd then gone back. This is like 40, 35, 40 years later and reshot the people wow. and that kind of thing. And that was, that was amazing. That, that's why I mentioned it. It was quite, I find quite interesting, that gap 
and then you reapproaching it kind of thing. So um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take that off the screen. Um, so um, let's get some interactions here from people. So Ian Price, he says, Laura mentioned she was looking at other photographers and wanted to do something different. Who were these photographers? Um, I guess I, you know, I have a friend um, who is a photographer, but he's also a lot of other things. And he always said to me that he refuses to um, to look at other, other people's work because he feels it's a distraction from his own vision. Um, his mind becomes infected. And I completely understand why. Like, I feel like I didn't used to look at as much work as I look at now. Um, mm -hmm. When I first started studying, it was just all books. I used to just sit in the library for hours and end and just look at books. And then I guess when I left uni, borders closed down and, you know, the internet became so much more accessible that I guess I look at um, work in a new format. So I guess, Ian, what I do is I look at work now that is, I guess, fed my way rather than seeking out work, if that makes sense. If I'd go into a bookstore, I'd stumble across a book. Whereas, you know, if there's a blog that I like reading or if there's, you know, I see an article on Facebook, I'll click on it um, and I'm led to the same photographers or I'm led to certain kinds of work, um, which is why I really try and go into bookshops um, now and again, just to kind of remind myself that I have a choice. But actually, I mean, that's another conversation that I feel like the book world has completely and utterly exploded as well. And I feel like people are shitting out books all over the place. So I don't know if that's helpful either. Um, but I guess it doesn't mean that I don't like those photographers' work. I still see that work as incredibly inspiring. Um, for example, like, you know, I've always loved people like Philip Lawford Corsia, Gregory Cruzden. You mentioned Alex Soth earlier. Um, so many people. And then, like, Man Ray, Diane Arbus. Um, just, I mean, the list goes on and on Charles yeah. Sternfield, like so many photographers, uh, Vanessa Winship. But also, you know, I quite like sort of now my, my inspirations come from different sources as well. So currently I've listened to, you know, an obscene amount of podcasts um, and that has inspired me in ways that I could never imagine and radio programs. Have you got any favourites? Favourite podcasts? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like well, the first. I'm always, I'm always looking for for new ones. That's for sure. Um, I like the first season of Invisibilia. I thought that was really yeah. good. Um, yeah. I love This American Life, but that's classic. I think I've pretty yeah. much exhausted the entire archive. Um, <laughs> I like Radio Lab. I really like The Truth. I don't know if you've ever listened about The Truth. I have. Um, yeah, and um, Selected Shorts. That's quite good. Um, new Yorker Fiction. Yeah, loads of stuff. Yeah, I yeah. think we've we've all become a you know we consume a lot of that audio now. Yeah. A lot of us, yeah. I think it's a great way to to check out people. Um, there's a great question here: What do you want to achieve from your work and projects? Asked Laura. I think like each one is different. So, for example, um, some of them are the idea of um, you know uh, completing a project. So, for example, with the recent series on Brexit it was very much a short term, right, this is like a game, you know, we've got a subject matter, we can create, we can explore, we can play and respond and wrap it up and, you know, in a nice tidy box. Whereas Youth Without Age and, you know, the project that I did on Young Love, which still will never ever finish, um, it's kind of, um, I guess, my main kind of, I would say, things to consider when I'm undergoing a project are, am I enjoying it? Is it hard? Is it teaching me something? Um, and am I exploring something that's interesting? You know, and I know that sounds like really obvious things, but, um, and also am I out of my comfort zone? I think the most kind of um, challenging projects that I've done have definitely been the most rewarding with regards to um, the feeling that I've had afterwards, but not necessarily the pictures, if that makes sense. Completely. Now, this is a good podcast, United Nations of Photography, okay. Photographic Life. Uh, they're all about 15 minutes long. They're very good. And uh, in particular, episode four and five, where we were mentioned. So that's very good. Grab that. so, uh, <laughs> I highly recommend that. So, yeah, Laura says thanks ever so much. That's really interesting. You, so that's, that's really good, Laura. Thanks ever so much. Uh, let's have a quick scroll down here. Pete McLean, he just says hi. 
there you go. Um, oh, that's a good question. This is a good question because I was wondering this. When are you releasing a book? No, oh, it's a really good question, isn't it, I guess? Um, do you know, it sounds really strange, but like the more the books came out, the less I wanted to release a book. Um, kind of feel like it's like having a baby. Um, I guess when somebody approaches me with a whole load of money and says, right, let's make a book. Um, yeah, I, I'm releasing something that isn't a book that's quite nice soon. And what, a record? Uh, I'd love to release the record. Um, I think it's, it's just a different format than a book. But for me, it's like a nice little way of presenting work. Um, yeah, I'd, li I'd like to do a book, but I'd like to do it when I feel like it's ready and it's right. I it must... almost feels like it's too late now. I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it feels... I must recommend this while we're talking. It's Last of the Crooners by Tom Alden. And um, it's not a book. He uh, recorded all the singers that he photographed. Or oh, wow. he, he produced it. Did. And... Uh, it was all the crooners that are in the palm tree pub in Mile End. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know that pub. Yeah, and he won uh, the Sunny Photographic, uh, the Sunny World Photo Award uh, for it. But he produced this. I bought this at, nice. the, at the pub itself. But it's, it's brilliant. It's the first, uh, uh, what I really liked about it, it wasn't a book. And, yeah. and, and you brought up the point that everybody's doing a book, and I love a book. Yeah. Um, as everybody was abusing me uh, that they were going to steal my books while I was trying to get you on online. The, um, but the way that Tom did it and the way it's become, it was slightly a, a very different project. I really loved that. I thought that I was think fantastic. It would be like, what would I release a book of? Like, would it be one project or would it be an overview? Um, yeah, I, I guess it, it depends what it would be of. Okay, there's lots of uh, suggestions down here. Um Funny. You know, have you got, um, you know, currently in your peer group, have you got favourite photographers? I've got, like, favourite, um, I've got, like, so many people that I adore. Um, but then just because you adore somebody doesn't mean you love their work. Yeah. So it's very different. Um, when you say favourite photographers, do you mean whose work you absolutely love? Yeah. Well, I mean, you did, you, you did a, a show with Rian and Adam. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so the you know you obviously have got a, a good sort of partnership with her working yeah she's like must, one of my best mates yeah like, must be yeah. heavily into what she does and that's great and it's just it, it, interesting because it's we'll, very different working with somebody like I, like there's people whose work I adore but I don't think I could work with them yeah. like Rhiannon and I are best friends and the way that we work is very fluid and organic because we think about things in a very similar way and we're quite immature and um, we just like playing so yeah. for us it's kind of perfect um i mean i when, <clears throat> look, when you said by the way i'm on eight percent when you said um you know whose whose work do i kind of out of my peers who do i do i mean the first person that sprung to mind was esther teichman um, oh okay i i just i've always loved her work and i always will i just think she's an absolute genius um and she's a beautiful person as well she's an amazing person um so she's probably one of my faves yeah i'd say she's a fave um there's yeah there's there's a lot of people there's so many people that inspire me daily um but yeah I I, that's a very good question i guess i guess we're so blessed we have such a a kind of fruitful community don't we of talented people um but it's just... It's never-ending at the moment, I find. That I'm con constantly yeah. looking at something and there's something, you're almost going fly-like, you know, zzz, and to the yeah, next yeah. thing, and then the next thing. And then there's and... stick. Like, you know, I've loved Esther's work for years. And, like, you know, obviously, I like Rhiannon's work. If I, if I didn't, I wouldn't work with her. Do you know what I mean? Um, and she knows that. Um, but there's also work that, you know, like I was saying, like Gregory Cruisden, who... I just come back to it again and again and again. I'm like, you're really good. Or, you know, Vanessa or all these people, you just kind of, they're very consistent. Yeah. Yeah. 
So look, I've got on screen, this is Young Love. Yes. Could we talk a little bit about that? Because I know that we are going to be limited on time. So um, can you just run us through it a little bit? It's on a like a slider. So Yeah, I mean, it worked it, almost 10 years ago now. Um, yeah. And it's something that I've just never kind of said that I'll ever stop. It's kind of one of those things that I'll just, uh, I, I know I'll continue to shoot. Um, I just love the idea of young relationships and young love. And I think it's something that everyone can relate to. Um, <clears throat> and I remember when I did it, I didn't really think about the concept of a project. Um, like, it's strange because, you know, the more you kind of learn about projects, the more you kind of, oh, God, I'm on truth, um, um, The more you... <laughs> The more you kind of, uh, uh, the more you see other projects and, and kind of, um, but for me, it was just almost like um, an extension of work that I was doing already with young people. I just noticed that all these people were couples that I was yeah. shooting anyway. And I was like, well, this is great. And then the more time I spent with them, the more exciting it became. And the more kind of I realized that there were so many stories in each relationship. And there was just so many dynamics to, working with each of those couples and it's so nostalgic for everyone it kind of it opens up so many conversations and memories and well this uh, would be the thing that you maybe would rediscover in 20 years or I something think so. and I think thing. especially now because dating has changed like um the way that we yeah. meet and the way we form relationships um has changed you know like um it's just fascinating how how love has evolved. Um, yeah. And for me, you know, young love and teenage love will be something that will just kind of never fail to entice me. Yeah, I think it's cool. And it, it's obviously all shot on film. Yeah. What, what kit are you shooting with, just out of interest? Oh, you can't ask the geek question. <laughs> Not when I'm on 3% battery. Um, I So when I was shooting that, I, heard, I think, I think I had a Bronica 645 um, mm -hmm. and maybe a Mamiya 645. And then I moved up to a 66 and now I shoot on that and uh, Worcester as well. So you, you predominantly sit, uh, stick with a square shape now? Yeah, yeah. Is there a reason for that? Because you did mention about keeping things in the centre. Is there something a bit... Um... Yeah, I guess it's really hard not to when you're shooting 66, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just like the clarity of the screen. First time yeah. I kind of a Hasselblad screen, I was like, ooh, it's so sharp and so That's cute. different, yeah. 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 Yeah, I love it. Let me, um, I'm just going to get this off the screen. How many uh, How many percent have we got left? Well, I've jumped back up to four, so I don't oh, know what my computer's right, doing. Okay, but... now this was an interesting, um, this really interested me, which was your... Um, Digital self esteem. Mm -hmm. um, let me get that up because that is cool. Um, sorry, it's just loading. Um, again, it's youth and, and speaking about um, social media and yeah. talking about all the digital issues that we're having currently. So, tell us how you how you came by dropping into this was this something that you were already shooting and then you thought oh no hang on this is now telling a different story um it was i guess to be honest with you um it was so it was a commission from the Saatchi gallery to do something that responded to the idea of the selfie yeah and my instant thought was gosh you know we're so we are just so obsessed with social media and selfies and um, I've always found the idea of having this digital persona um, so misleading and, and so, I think it's quite, I, th I think it's fascinating. I think it's absolutely fascinating, whether it's dating, whether it's applying for a job through LinkedIn, whether it's, do you know what I mean? All these kind of um, different caricatures of oneself and um, the judgments that um, they can receive and also the the pressure that we place on our physical selves to achieve that three, you know, that 2D self. Um, and, uh, and I thought, you know, I wanted to return back to teenagers because you are transitioning into finding your identity. So, you know, if it's challenging as an adult to position yourself in 3D against your 2D self, how 
confusing would it be for a teenager when you know you're forming this identity anyway and you're grappling with the idea of metamorphosizing into somebody else and then what what about your digital persona is that changing as well and you know are you judging yourself and how you behaved two weeks ago two years ago um and then i also think thought about how rare it was that we actually look in the mirror um unless we're brushing our teeth Oh, here we go. Okay, so that looks like that's the three percent. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get it back in. No, I think she's out of that. Uh, I think she's out of battery. So, okay, so a few technical issues, but I hope that you guys have got uh, a lot of uh, out of this. I think that she's uh, answered quite a lot of questions and covered a lot of ground very quickly, actually. And um, we'll definitely be getting her back again uh, because there's so much to talk about. And also with Rhiannon and Adam, we were um, trying to get Rhiannon on board as well, and she's busy this week and next so maybe we'll get them both on at some point because it, they were showing their show at Peckham uh, Peckham 24 and I think that if if there was a uh, so look I'm going to leave you guys to it it was uh, a bit of a shorter one this evening but we'll catch up again uh, in the next few days so thanks so much <laughs>